I listened to the senator from Tennessee calling this bill uh, a, a, a spending bill, in fact, an entitlement bill. I just asked the senator from Tennessee. I believe the senator from Tennessee voted for farm subsidies. I believe the senator from Tennessee voted for the capital gains tax reduction. I believe the senator from Tennessee voted for the oil and gas depreciation. Now, I'd like to know from the senator from Tennessee, if those aren't subsidies, how he distinguishes incentives that change behavior that are market driven. You either take advantage of it or you don't. Nobody command and control. It's up to the individual company. Why is the effort to have a, a, a transfer of a, of, of, a, of, a, of a payment that is an incentive for different behavior any different from any of those things the senator from Tennessee has voted for? Well, actually, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. That's the portion of cap-and-trade legislation, uh, Mr. President, that I believe is, is appropriate. Unfortun unfortunately, what this bill does is it takes in trillions of dollars and then pre-prescribes how that money is spent going out into areas to people that have nothing whatsoever to do with emitting carbon. 27% of the allocations go out to entities in this country that have nothing whatsoever to do with emitting carbon. That is a huge unnecessary transference of wealth. Uh, I'd like to yield my time. I'd like to yield uh, some time to Senator Domenici. I answered the question, and I'd love to debate you further on the floor. I know we have a pressing senator uh, from Pennsylvania. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. I just want to say uh, to everyone in the Senate, um, in all honesty, you ought to have a chance to hear of the senator from Tennessee. If you, ha if you haven't, you ought to read what he said. Because there's no question that I, as a rather informed senator, have no idea what this bill does until I listen to him and then go look at it. And it is absolutely incredible that we are thinking of a bill like this to solve climate change, when as a matter of fact, it's going to be the biggest redistribution of wealth we've ever adopted in this Senate, and we aren't even sure it will accomplish anything very significant toward the reduction of carbon dioxide as, as an impediment to climate change. I, I can't understand why we would be doing this. One little piece is a commission of five, member, five men who would distribute allocations pursuant to this legislation, totally at, at their discretion, a trillion dollars or more. Now, who on God's earth thinks that's what's in this bill? But it is. So I commend him. I hope he comes here two or three times and explains again in more detail what this bill does. I'm not against legislation for climate change, but I am convinced that we better do something for the American people on bridging, bridging crude oil use, crude oil development, putting some of the things we need in place for energy before we put this legislation in place. I think the American people will soon understand that. Mr. President, how much time is left? You have 15 seconds left, Senator from Tennessee. Let me, let me just say that I, I hope we have further debate, and I respect people on both sides of the aisle. Surely we can come up with a way to make sure our environment is appropriately dealt with and that we have energy security and not cause this burden to be a burden on Americans as it is by pre-spending trillions of dollars. Mr. Time has expired. Mr. Time. California. Mr. President, we all respect each other, but I have to say, I don't think my friend from Tennessee understands this bill at all. All I could say is he couldn't understand it because the biggest pieces of this bill, okay, is funds for the American people. A big tax cut. If my friend opposes a tax cut, he ought to say it. It's a huge tax cut for the American people to help them deal with the increases in gas prices. Right now, under this president, we've seen a 250% increase in a gallon of gas. Just in seven years, we have no resources. This bill gives us the resources. It gives us consumer relief. Now, my friend from Tennessee used very harsh words, in my opinion, to attack a bill that really does address the issue of global warming, addresses the issue of energy independence. And for him to call it command and control is rather a joke, since we specifically rejected a carbon tax 
and we allowed the free market, the free market to set a price on carbon. As to Senator Domenici's statement, again, he says it will do nothing. Read the modeling. We do what we have to do in this country to exert the leadership to decrease this, these greenhouse gases, and we do it in a way that has won the support of business and labor and huge numbers of people across this country, including the U.S. Conference of Mayors, Republican and Democratic governors. I say to my good friend, you and I have worked on this thing over a period of about two, three months. Uh, I have worked on this thing for eight months. I don't claim any special credit, but if you feel so badly about this bill, why haven't you and others brought to the floor a companion bill to replace this and to solve the problems that you have? I mean, it's one thing to come in here and hail damnation on what we've done by means of putting this bill together. But if it's going to be a constructive process, Can show us a, it, it, let me just finish the statement and I'll yield the floor, a comprehensive bill that will work to the satisfaction of a majority of the people here. Now, for example, you talk about this board, the seven men, let's say there might be a woman or two on it for just for technical reason. All right. But the point is, if you look at section 435 of the bill, it says that chart that you have up there has to be approved by the Congress. It isn't. Well, nevertheless, you omitted any reference to the fact that Congress has a hand. If, if you look at the amendment I've put on here, the President of the United States at any time he or she desires can go in and change that. So it's not as if we've unleashed this thing in perpetuity. There are a number of checks and balances in this bill to protect the very things that you state. Mr. President, Mr. President, if I could yield since my name has been brought forth uh, for just 60 Please. seconds. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. First of all, this bill in black and white pre-spends over $1 trillion with no congressional oversight. You're right on the one portion you're referring to, on the one portion you're referring to, we can either veto it or approve it, but we have no say-so in how those technology monies are spent. Now, I object to the comment about me, Johnny, come lately. I have been very transparent about this legislation. I have offered three very detailed amendments to every colleague in this Senate and have given the background to them of those. I have been totally transparent throughout this process. I have made public presentations about three amendments that I think would make this bill far better, things that people call poison pills. And I think you know that I certainly have not come to this debate at, at a late time, and I plan to offer those amendments. Time has expired. I agree with what President, you said. Time has expired.